The best combat in D&D is the combat that feels like a real fight, a genuine struggle between the players and their enemies that leaves an imprint on the players' minds. But let's face it, that can be hard to do with the combat mechanics of D&D 5e. And the Dungeon Master's Guide doesn't do a great job of explaining how to do this either. So here are a couple of ways you can make your combat more memorable. But before moving on, subscribe if you like to. As the Game Master, it is your job at the table to keep the game moving. You set the pace and prompt the players to keep going. Pacing is different at different parts of the game, and more often than not, pacing actually slows down during combat. But it shouldn't be that way. Combat is chaotic and messy and confusing, and the combat you run should reflect some of that. I mean, when was the last time you finished a D&D combat and thought to yourself, huh, that was over quickly? To give your players a sense of urgency, and to pick up the pace during combat, I recommend giving your players a time limit, say, about 30 seconds, to decide what they do on their turn. Giving your players this time limit simulates the rush of combat, and to make it even more urgent, tell your players that if the time runs out before they decide what to do for their turn, they lose their turn that round due to inaction. Set the expectation that as soon as the last player's actions have been resolved, the timer sets for the next person. This way the players really have to think on their feet. 30 seconds is not a very long time. The players will realize that they need to be paying attention to what is happening, and if they want to succeed, they need to be thinking ahead. The hope is that your players will come together and communicate more when it comes to making combat decisions. It would be a really good idea to sit down and talk with your players first about implementing this rule in the first place, and also deciding on a time limit together, say anywhere between 10 to 60 seconds depending on what your group is most comfortable with. Once you have that time limit, have a timer and stick to it. And of course it would be best practice for you as a dungeon master to have a similar time limit when you're running your monsters. Give yourself the same time limit you decided as a group and assign one of your players to keep their timer for you. Also, I want to note that resolving the actions people decide to do doesn't necessarily have to fall within that time limit. Some of us are slow with even basic math, so give yourself and your players a little bit of grace when you're navigating the mechanics and resolving those actions. I think the biggest pitfall of D&D 5e combat is actually the combat system itself. Your players encounter some baddies, you roll initiative, and the turn order is established, and then monsters and players each take turns doing their actions. Now, turn order combat is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be really easy to just kind of throw your monsters at your players as they are, with no big plan other than to pulverize the players before they get pulverized. The thing is, your monsters are not mindless drones that do nothing but attack the players until they lose all their HP, or they themselves lose their own HP. Although that could be a fun encounter if you were like in a giant wasp's nest and the queen sent all of her drones to attack the party and swarm them while she stood back and called the shots. The point is that your monsters will have a plan or an instinct that's going to influence their behavior during combat. You also want to think about your monster's goal and their motivations for this combat. What are they trying to accomplish? Are they hungry? Are they trying to protect something? Do they want to capture the players and eat them later or sell them for a ransom? Remember that combat is merely a means to an end or a form of conflict resolution. A fantastic resource for determining monster strategy is a book written by Keith Amon called The Monsters Know What They're Doing. I genuinely love this book. I actually used some of the advice in it to run a really good combat for some of my players a couple years ago. My players were traveling through a desert and they set up camp for the night. I had a table of random encounters I was rolling as a way to mark the passage of time and to see if anything happened during the night. One such rule determined that the party's camp was about to be ambushed by some Tlinkali, which are basically scorpion centaurs. Keith Amon's blog, with the same title as his book, has an article about this specific monster, and he lays out the monster's most common motivations and how they behave in combat. For starters, they are known to abduct travelers who they view as prey and feed them to their young at camp. They also prioritize using their sting attack to make it easy to knock out their target. The blog entry had a bullet point list of tactics, and I simply used that. The Tlinkali approached the camp, buried in the sand, and pulled off a surprise attack on the players. In the first round of combat, the player rogue was hit and paralyzed by a sting attack. The party cleric managed to survive the initial surprise. In the next round, the Tlinkali attacking the cleric failed a sting attack again, so it followed up with a chain attack. This time the cleric was restrained, and at that point, the players were taken hostage and brought to the Tlinkali camp. What followed was an impressive escape plan on the player's part. The rogue, no longer paralyzed, used sleight of hand to break his bonds, and then he freed the cleric. The rogue had several bombs in his equipment, and his plan was to sneak around camp and set them up on a chain reaction that could cover the party's escape. Each bomb was planted successfully, and then the rogue set them off. The combined damage and area of effect of the bombs decimated the camp, leaving a crater of glass in his wake. The players also took some damage from the blast, but they survived. My players later explained to me 
that even though they had their butts whipped during the ambush, it was a really fun encounter for them, and they enjoyed fighting monsters that behaved uniquely. 